Hello, it's Sunday, it's late, I'm late, and I apologize to Kareem Neal for being late. Um, this week, Kareem has asked us to focus on Black entertainers, and I am focusing on a Black entertainer whose resilience, resistance, perseverance, and determination has made her a role model to me for all of my adult life, Josephine Baker. This is a children's book about Josephine Baker. It won the Coretta Scott King Award, and it also won the, this is a new award to me, I apologize, the Robert F. Seibert Award. This is a long picture book, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I want you to really enjoy the photographs, the pictures, the illustrations, and the words as it tells the life of this incredible woman. And here we have an empty stage. The book was written by Patricia Ruby Powell with illustrations by Christian Robinson. And it is amazing. I shall dance all my life. I would like to die breathless, spent, at the end of a dance, Josephine Baker in 1927. Josephine, all razzmatazz, erupted into the roaring 20s, a volcano. America wasn't ready for Josephine, the colored superstar. Paris was. The beginning. And again, I'm gonna need my glasses for this one. Josephine, born poor out of wedlock in Honky Tonk Town, rambunctious St. Louis, Missouri, home of barrel houses, nickel shots of whiskey and gambling halls, home of ragtime music, raggedy black music, gotta make the rent music, lift my soul music, golden age music. Josephine's mama scrubbed floors, but would have rather been dancing where you were free of how to pay the rent, where you could be right there in your body, nowhere else, where you could let your body laugh or cry. She dreamt of dancing alongside acrobats, magicians, animals, honky-tonk bands, you name it, call it vaudeville, the most popular entertainment of the day. Josephine sat on mama's knee and sponged up that funky music through her ears, her body, her soul. Mama called her Tumpy, that round baby girl, after Humpty Dumpty. With her first breath, she made faces. As soon as she walked, she danced. And she kept on all her life to get attention, to entertain, to set the mood. She told this story. Walking home from church one day, she stepped on a rusty nail and her small legs swelled. Doctor said, amputate. Josephine screamed to keep her leg. How was she going to dance with only one leg? She screamed till she fainted. When she woke up, she felt for her leg. And yes, there it was. She could have danced for joy. Her family moved through the slums of St. Louis like a band of vagabonds from shack to shack. They all six slept in one bed. Daddy and mama heads one way, four kids the other way, newspapers covering the window. Tumpy was mama, daddy, and Santa to the little ones, old ropes for jumping, bits of chalk for hopscotch, and cast off dolls, all wrapped in discarded paper, presents for Richard, Margaret, and Willie May. Mama washed laundry for other people. Tumpy scrubbed alongside. And Tumpy danced. I didn't have any stockings. I danced to keep warm. Leaving with the show, 1917 to 1921. Race riots, white against Negro, erupted across the river, across from Shantytown, because some Negroes earn better wages than whites at better jobs. White rabble-rousers spread lies, said Negroes were invading white neighborhoods, 
to steal, rape, murder. White folks got scared. Those ugly rumors incited some white folks to beat, murder, and burn Black East St. Louis. Josephine saw colored people beaten, fleeing their homes across the bridge over the Mississippi River to St. Louis, to her neighborhood. Fear grasped hold of her heart and squeezed tight, the core of a volcano. Anger heated and boiled into steam, pressing hot in a place deep in her soul. Later, she let the steam out in little poofs. Poof, a funny face that used to be fear. Poof, she mocked gesture that used to be anger. Then she turned it into a dance. Josephine delivered laundry for grandma and mama. She cleaned and babysat. She earned pennies, pennies adding up to nickels. Put three nickels together and Tumpy went to the Booker T. Washington Theater, the Negro Theater, the place where Ma Rainey sang and Bessie Smith walked, the place where dancers hooked. In those days, Negroes entertained Negroes one place, whites entertained whites another, segregated. Tumpy got the kids on her street to dance and sing on a stage of crates their very own vaudeville. Tempe starred, of course. Josephine joined the Jones family, a ragtag trio dancing and playing on the streets, earning spare change. Papa Jones played the big horn, Mama the trumpet, Daughter Daw played the fiddle, Josephine played slide trombone. She danced, she sang, she shouted and hollered on the street. A vivacious vaudeville troupe, the Dixie Steppers, booked at the Booker T. Washington Theater, needed an extra act. The Jones family, performing outside, won the job. Off the street and onto the stage, Josephine danced like she was on fire. She arched her back and flipped her tail like a rooster. So fine that the Dixie Steppers asked her to step with them. So long, Jones family. Josephine was stepping out. Hooked on wires, she held bow and arrow, but her wires got crossed, couldn't get down. Hang it in midair. She rolled her eyes like shooting marbles, flashed those long legs. What a clown. Seeing everybody looking at me electrified me, she said. The audience laughed themselves to tears. They stomped, they clapped. Just a kid, 13, and Josephine loved that crazy applause. Cross your heart, swear you won't tell mama, I'm leaving with the show. And Josephine set out with the Dixie Steppers. She'd conquer the world and show them all. She'd be rich, she'd be famous, she'd send money home. The Dixie Steppers took the train down the Mississippi to New Orleans, dancing, singing, partying all the way. Through the land of the Ku Klux Klan were hostile white faces hid under white hoods where white folks threatened colored folks, where whites lived apart, segregated, were signs for one latrine read white and for another colored, where a white person wouldn't sell you a cup of coffee because you were a Negro. They performed on the black vaudeville circuit, ramshackle theaters and open air hollows, so instead of dancing, Josephine became the dresser. She helped dress the dancers down in New Orleans until her usefulness ran out. And who just happened to be in town but the ragtag Jones family. The Dixie Stepper said, stay here with the Joneses, Josephine, because you're not stage material. But that didn't suit Josephine's plan to conquer the world. Before the Dixie Stepper's train shuttered out of the station, Josephine hid in a costume trunk, a stowaway kid. She lurched and bounced and bruised inside that trunk. The train screeched to a stop 25 miles down the line. She climbed out. The Dixie stepper scolded her, consoled her, and took her back into the fold. She begged the director, 
could she please dance on the stage? She knew every dance, every song. But Mr. Russell said her skin was too light to fit in with the other girls. To the whites, I look chocolate. To the blacks, like a pinky. But Mr. Russell tired of her begging and let her join the chorus line. Hurrah! Josephine danced on stage after stage, sang to the crowds, but was kept out of restaurants, hotels, and train stations for whites only, segregated. Josephine's volcanic core heated, but the comic in her got funnier, like a hot steam release. Poof! The chorus kicked forward, she kicked backward. Pop! They strutted, she shimmied. The hoofers in the chorus scowled, but the audience laughed. Josephine stepped out of time at the end of the chorus line, dancing with the Dixie Steppers all the way to Philadelphia, where the Dixie Steppers, tired of the road, went their separate ways. My face isn't made for sleeping. 1921 to 1925. Josephine, just a tall, skinny kid, 15 on her own, in the city of Philadelphia, met Willie Baker, Pullman Porter, and married him. And now she was Josephine Baker. She heard about the first all black show on Broadway, White Theater Street, New York City, USA, Shuffle Along, performed by Negro folk in those segregated, segregated times, somehow broke onto Broadway. And the white folk loved it, sounded good to Josephine. Bound for Broadway, she rode the train alone. She got off the train in New York at night with nothing to eat and nowhere to sleep. She found a park bench, tucked her bundle of clothes under her head, and slept. Walked straight to the theater, bold as shout, and auditioned. Sorry, too small, too thin, too dark. Wasn't there any place in the world where color didn't matter? But Josephine got the job dressing the dancers again. She learned every dance again. Brush, fasten, unfasten, button, unbutton. The dancers looked discouragingly healthy, but one night a dancer didn't show up. That's all it took. Josephine stepped in front of the audience. When I saw those watching faces, a giddiness swept over me. I let the music carry me away. The audience whistled and clapped. At the end of the chorus line, she stumbled off balance on elastic legs on purpose, looked up in surprise, dropped her elbows like limp washcloths, crossed her eyes, flashed a smile, and the audience laughed. Josephine jutted out her hip, flirted and grinned and stole the spotlight from Eva the star. The audience howled. It's impossible to take your eyes off that little cross-eyed girl. She made the white audiences laugh, mugging faces, grimacing and sighing through her exotic jig. Josephine soaked it up and kept the job. After shuffle, Josephine danced and sang downtown at the plantation club but she couldn't sit at a table, couldn't eat dinner with the white folk, couldn't even enter the front door. Negroes used the back door. Those were the rules, American rules. In restaurants, nightclubs, hotels, trains, couldn't try on hats in the department store. That was for whites only. And that volcanic pressure kept squeezing tighter way below the surface, hot magma, molten lava trapped within. But Josephine made good money and sent it home for her sister's schooling, a piano for little Willie May. One day, there'd be a house for them all. For the first time in my life, I felt beautiful. 1925 to 1936. Performing at the Plantation Club, goofy, glamorous, sparkling, Josephine caught the eye of an elegant white lady, Carolyn Dudley. 
she asked Josephine to perform in La Revue Negre in Paris, France. Paris? Oh, yes. Get ready for a blast. Get ready for Josephine. On the ship from New York, just like any good old American hotel, rich white flappers and sleek gentlemen strolled the upper decks. Josephine and the cast strutted the lower decks, segregated. They landed in France, together. They boarded the French train, together. And in the dining car, we were welcomed. We couldn't believe our eyes. Were the French colorblind? The troop of Harlem Negroes poured out of the train into rainy Paris, wearing vermilion, rose, yellow, green, plaid pants, polka dotted skirts, and shirts outlandish hats tipped over ebony faces and every one of them laughing to beat the band. Vive la revue. From this jovial group, a teenage, bronze, checkered overalls strode forth, smiled and said, so this is Paris. Josephine had arrived in the city of lights. Paul Colin, hired to paint the poster that would advertise La Revue Negre, looked at Josephine, a mere chorus girl, with her beautiful ebony body like a prize fighter, like a kangaroo, with rhythm in her hips, like a cat ready to strike, a volcano about to burst. He sketched her again and again, and Josephine became the poster girl. For the first time in my life, I felt beautiful. Josephine sizzled. Deep trapped steam flashed and whistled. Josephine was on fire. Call the fire department. No, don't. Knee squeeze, now fly, arms scissor and splay. Word got out, opening night, the theater crackled with tension. A giant dancer lifted Josephine onto the stage like black lava she slid off his back and faced the audience and her deep volcanic core, filled with emotion, filled with music, erupted. She shimmied, she shook, she swiveled, she kicked, sparks flew. C'est magnifique. I improvised, crazed with music, even my teeth and eyes burst with fever. I left to touch the sky. When I regained earth, it was mine alone. The audience went wild. A star was born. Night after night, Josephine brought in the crowds. A dream come true. People watched and said, Black is beautiful. She starred. Josephine, her name up in lights, was living a fairy tale. The theater filled with princes, painters, diplomats. Josephine was all the rage. People bought Josephine dolls clad in bananas, Josephine lipsticks, shoes, perfume, dresses, hair pomade, high society tanned to look like Josephine. And all the while, Josephine bleached her skin with lemons to look like high society. She strode down the Champs Elysees in the heart of Paris with her cheetah, Chiquita each wearing a diamond choker, as regal as a queen by day and wild as a cheetah by night. She made records, started a movie, then a second and a third, rags to riches. Josephine danced through Germany, Russia, Egypt, Sweden, South America. Her admirer, admirer sent her love letters, jewels, flowers, automobiles. They loved her. They were awed by her abandon. She was explosive and scandalous. In Vienna, Austrians called her a devil and riots erupted in the street. Josephine was baffled. Her, a devil? But she had an idea. That night at the theater, dressed in a cream colored gown, buttoned to the throat, she sang the Austrians a lullaby, pretty little baby, a Negro spiritual from a time when Negro slaves were beaten by white masters. 
Who could call her a savage, a devil? It worked. The Austrians called her an angel. She glowed. France made me what I am, 1936 to 37. But she still needed to conquer America. So she sailed home. The very first thing she divorced Willie Baker, ended that long ago marriage, then on to the show. She starred in the Ziegfeld Follies, all white follies in New York City. She bubbled with joy. She became the first and only female Negro folly star ever. Yet she had to enter the hotel through the servant's entrance, segregated. She exploded with a scalding blast when she was called a Negro wench, a Negro wench indeed. Life is a series of summits and behind each crest looms another peak to be scaled, she said. Back in France, she made the most of her volcanic steam. To recover from the hurt, she became a stunt pilot, flew loop-the-loops over the countryside, met a millionaire in midair, married him, but he wanted to live at home. She divorced him. An artist cannot abandon the stage. Europe had come to a hard simmer. War erupted. France has made me what I am and I am prepared to give my life for France. Josephine became a member of the French resistance. Newspapers reported her dead, but she got well, well enough to comfort the wounded, bounce along dirt roads, get lost in sandstorms, sleep on the ground like a soldier with sand fleas, and perform for the U.S. troops. Black soldiers must sit down front, she said, together with the white soldiers in her audience. Never had she been happier. She became a hero. She helped win the war for France, the U.S. and their allies. She was awarded France's highest honor, the Legion of Honor. Josephine Baker went on to adopt a family of children of all races and all colors. She made a fortune, she lost it. She made another, she lost it. Josephine Baker was a hero, a hero in terms of being one of the first black entertainers to break the color barrier, a hero in terms of being a member of the French resistance and helping to win the Second World War. I wore my heart in my toes and my soul on my lips. I sang for the Paris that created me and I wept as I danced. Josephine experienced a comeback, not just a comeback, an eternal return. Paris opened its arms to Josephine once again. Her doctor said rest, but she couldn't. After the opening celebration of Josephine, she was up half the night partying. Victory was too sweet, but she was ready to go to the next cabaret. No one would join her, too tired, they said. The cast took her home to bed and she went to sleep and never woke up. News spread around the world. This time it was true. Josephine had died. Paris gave her the funeral of a queen. A hearse covered with flowers carried her coffin through the streets. Hundreds of police locked arms to stop the crowd from crushing the hearse. A voice in the crowd said, she is dead yet she is immortal. As she wished, Josephine died breathless, spent at the end of a dance. Adieu, Josephine. This is a biography of Josephine Baker. I also have a set of paper dolls of Josephine Baker. 
when I was a little girl, I would visit my Nana and Pop Pop in the Bronx. And my Nanny Pauline, my grandmother, my father's mother, would teach me how to cut out paper dolls. And ever since then, I've collected paper dolls of my heroines. And this is my paper doll book of Josephine Baker. Josephine Baker, who broke the color barriers as a black entertainer. Josephine Baker, who broke barriers for women. Josephine Baker, a spy in the French resistance. Josephine Baker, a heroine. I hope that you enjoyed this story and I hope that you will look for it and buy it on your own because it is brilliant and it is a biography for children about a brilliant incandescent woman. Thank you for listening.